Blog Talk Radio. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the VRO. Tonight, we have the executive producer and writer for season two of The Walking Dead, Glenn Mazzara. And, uh, Glenn, how are you doing tonight? I'm great. Thanks for having me, Amber. Thank you. Thank, no, thank you. Thank you for coming on. We're big fans of the show around here, so uh, we're going to jump into some questions. Um, the first one I got for you is, it's never really been explained why zombies eat flesh. Do you have your own explanation for that? Uh, that is a great question. That's just something that's been part of zombie lore. So I think that... Um, uh, we have talked in the room about that they just want to eat, that there is a, a type of uh, sense of memory that they are being compelled to eat, why they're cannibals. Uh, that's just something that's, I think, I think just part of that creature. Uh, I, don't, I don't have a specific answer for that. Uh, but they're not eating necessarily for nourishment. You know, they're not, they're not eating to stay alive. Okay, well, that kind of takes me into the second question then. Um, we have um, we have a recap show where we've done some roundtable, and we kind of mm-hmm. brought up the the whole thing about zombies decaying and how right. eventually it seems like they would just decay and all die off. So is there a reason why, is that kind of why it seems they're so slow at decaying, or is there any kind of truth behind that at all? No, they they would decay. This is something that, if you think about our show, the timeline, it, it, the from the time that Rick wakes up to the end of season two, we think is only about four or five months, or or you know four or five months, say for the entire zombie apocalypse since the since everything went to hell, right? Right. So so we think that. As the show develops and you get further down the line, if a zombie became a zombie, if a walker became a walker early on, you would start to see higher levels of decay as the show continues. So so that's something that we've actually spoken with Greg Nicotero, our makeup effects person, who I just think is brilliant at what he does, that eventually we want to get to a higher level of decay. Now, keep in mind, though, that we have uh, uh, said that everyone's infected. So as people are dying, there will always be fresh walkers. So Mm -hmm. that uh, um, uh, device that comes from Robert Kirkman's comic book ensures that there's not – that the survivors – always have fresh zombies that they're dealing with that they can't just, you know, lock themselves away and wait it out. So there are always, as as people, you know, die off of starvation or sickness or old age, it, it, it's a perpetual problem. So it's definitely inevitable. Like, that's it. The world's over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sort of. <laughs> no, I, it's it's a problem, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it sounds like a problem. Okay, yeah. well, um, in season one and season two, it kind of just seems like the characters have just been surviving. Do you think that yeah. it will change to them adapting to the world in season three? Definitely. That that's something that well, actually I'm I'm in the writers' room uh, just before this call, uh, working on scripts, and and I think that's important. You know, is that there are different levels of trauma, and there's a lot of questioning. There's there's uh, just uh, immediate survival. People trying to process what's happening, and then you have to say, okay, what comes next? You know, one of the questions we played in both season one and season two is, where do we go? We're safe. I think by the end of season two, people realize there is no place that's safe, so there's no help coming. There's no government. There's no authority that's going to swoop in and save us. There's no cure, probably. Uh, that's how it feels. So now it's on up to our survivors to try to pick themselves together, uh, pick themselves up, and and try to um, um, uh, rebuild civilization. And that's something that will play on different in different storylines. So that's that's something that's very important. And it's also something that is really a, a, a major through line for for years in Robert Kirkman's book. That's that's what The Walking Dead comic book is about and that's something that that we hope to uh uh keep of course see i know that a lot of fans have really appreciated you following the comic books as closely as you could without copying it word for word 
I know I, I know a lot of people really appreciate that. So that's really oh well, cool. thank you. That's it's it's yeah. been a challenge. You know, it's it's been it's been. Um, but I think it's it. It's been great to have that comic book to draw upon, and Robert is, you know, indispensable to the show. He's in the writers' room with us. He's he's a writer on the show. He's a executive producer involved in every aspect of the show that I am. So he's uh, to have his blessing every step of the way has really been important to us, and I think has helped keep us honest. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, in season three. Do you think we will see how the zombies are in the winter? Um, I would rather not answer that. I'd rather people be surprised. I would rather people be surprised. I know that that, that is a big question, and that's something that, um, you know, we we uh, certainly it, – it's important to us. But I, I don't want to give anything away. Okay, that works. That's fair. All right, and and for anybody that has never been to Georgia, we don't have much of a winter. So that's um, right. If yeah. there is going to be a winter, they're probably going to have to go somewhere else. <laughs> right. It might be, it might be, yeah. uh, you know, Walking Dead, Wyoming, or something. We might have to yeah. do a spinoff <laughs> or something. You know. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is kind of a silly question, but we actually had several people ask us this, and everybody wants to know what the T in T Dog stands for. I don't think it stands for anything. I think at one point, at one point, he said, "You tell me, did this make it to air?" I think his name was Thaddeus. His name was Thaddeus Douglas. Did that? Did I? I may have. We may have cut that reference, but but that and that his name and the story. I think we did have a scene where his his name. He gave himself the name T Dog to just kind of make himself look like a little bit more of a badass. Because he was by himself with this group of crazy white people, so he sort of wanted to look a little more uh, street, actually, and intimidate them. That that was that was something that we had discussed in the room, and I think that um, actually uh, um, had been written. And I, I I think I don't think we made it, it made it in there. Yeah, I don't I don't remember him saying his name, but I could be wrong. Yeah. I, nobody in yeah. chat has said anything yet. I'm watching, but nobody said anything yet. So yeah, we'll yeah. Have to see. All right, was it the show's intention, um, especially kind of towards the end of season two, for fans to dislike Lori's character as much as they do, or did that kind of come as a surprise to you guys? You, you know what? That's that's a tough question. Um, we did not intentionally want to make a, a character unlikable. We wanted that character to be honest. And I think we've been very consistent with that character to tell you the truth. I think she she is a control freak. I agree. I think she I think she um has rules for everyone else. Andrea says that. She, she uh um does not apply those rules to herself. She also picks and chooses what she believes. She's a bit uh, of a revisionist when she looks back at her own actions. So she 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 makes excuses and she sort of twists facts to fit what she wants to believe about herself. Okay? Um that I think, you know, let let's face it, we all work in offices, we've all had jobs, we've we we have families where there are just these kind of folks who set the rules for everyone else and they drive the rest of us crazy and we say, oh, can you believe what she did today or can you believe what my boss is saying or whatever and, and don't they see that this is a problem and I think that this character actually feels real. I think that's why everybody's talking about her because it's an int it's a unique character. It's something that because there are rules in TV that all your characters have to be likable and and she's not necessarily a villain. She's just a person who is, you know, a a, a bit of um, I wouldn't say a narcissist, but she's self centered. Let's say that you know she tries to center. You know she she um, she believes she's not self centered. She believes she's focused on her husband. Well, she's cheated on that guy. She believes she's focused on her son. He's running all over the place. Um, so it's it's uh, she's she feels real to me. She feels real, and um, um, you know um, I, I think I think I like to believe that she's striking a chord because she she because 
I think people know somebody like that, and you kind of just have them in your world. Imagine being in an apocalypse with a person like that. You know, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know that I would. <laughs> But you could see how that happens. You yeah, fall in I with people and like, oh boy, this person is telling me what to do all the time. Why? Who gave them the right? You could right. see that happening. Right. I just I need that to be my ringtone now. She thinks she's focused on her son, but he's running all over the place. That was great. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the explanation, of Lori. Okay. Um, so the zombie that killed Dale. Yeah. was um, for originally in the mud, and, you know, Carl had the gun and was supposed to shoot it, blah, blah, blah. And then later we see that zombie just rip Dale open with no problem. Is That's there a right. reason why that zombie was all of a sudden so strong? Cause they could yeah, so no, here's the mud, thing. But... <laughs> okay, here's a couple of things. If If a zombie, and this will be explained in Season 3, if a zombie does not eat, they will fall into a, a stupor. And and they will become a lurker. Okay, we have walkers, uh, and and we have uh, roamers, is, which is a type of of walker. And there and this and, and but sometimes they'll fall into a type of stupor. We saw this in the church in the first episode, where the the zombies were just sitting there in the church, and then when our crew walks in, suddenly they spring to life. Okay, so the zombies are are awoken. You know, in a sense, not that they're asleep, but they're sort of, you know, dialed down. Okay, so this creature, when you see him stuck in the mud, he's there. He's he's not really struggling. He's kind of looking down, and he's just, you know, uh, uh, has has kind of fallen into that stupor. What happens is then, Carl Fresh Meat approaches, and now he becomes agitated. He's 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 being awoken. This is something that, you know. Kirkman has in his books. This is something that Nicotero has 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 brought to us, and so we've been trying to be consistent with these these ideas. We haven't. Our crew has not figured this out yet. Okay. Right. So what happens is now he's becoming not necessarily super strong. One of the things is that we and Greg Nicotero directed that episode. We felt that you know if his fingernails were growing and and say there was some finger off his finger bones that that his fingers you know, at least could maybe form some type of claw, let's say, and that's what gave him enough to create an incision in Dale's belly. We didn't show that effect. That was probably a mistake on our part. It's something that, you know, this 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 uh, claw thing, it's something that I think we'll see again in the future to kind of explain what we're talking about. But Believe it or not, there was a reasoning behind all of our madness that it made sense to us whether or not we put it all on screen so that it was satisfying to the audience. I could argue that we probably didn't, and uh, we'll do better. Stick with us, okay? No, <laughs> I, I don't think – I think that scene was very justified, and I think that you saying that makes a lot makes sense to me about the zombies being in the stupor and then them all of a sudden – Awoken. I, I think one of the hosts was joking about, hey, if you're hungry and you've got to eat, you'll, you'll do anything to get it. So I, that that makes sense. That that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, thank you for explaining that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, can you tell us if we'll ever see uh, Merle again? Yes, you will see Merle again. Okay. <laughs> okay, and I got a couple more questions before we let you off. Um, sure. I am personally a huge fan of Herschel. Um, I, he's just my favorite character. I don't know what it is about him, but I he's, I, he's great. Love I love him. I love him. I, I, Scott I love Wilson him. does like, a, a tremendous job with him. Yeah, he he's also. I've shed tears. I've, I mean, just everything. I love Herschel. So I guess my question for you is, what will it take for you to promise me that you'll never kill him off the show? <laughs> Um, I I can't make that promise. I won't make that promise about anybody. I will honestly say that, you know, we have discussed uh, every character's death on this show. You know, this is a if you look at, uh, including Rex. You know, we've with the, no one is safe. No one is safe on this show. And I think that, you know, the the story we've been telling. Hopefully, people realize that. You know, that we we are really you know trying to fight hard against that. 
sense of security you get when you're watching your favorite TV show and say, oh, this character's too popular. They're never going to kill him off or or they'll never do this. This person has to come back for season, the next season or whatever. Um, yeah, we're crazy over here. So so I, I can't make that promise for anybody. Trust me, the actors would love for me to make that promise. But. <laughs> You know, and and I we were talk we were talking about this that whenever I call somebody, you know, because I've had to call people, obviously, and say, you know, next script comes out, we're gonna kill off your character. So now when I call the actors, they're all nobody wants to take my call. Everyone's afraid to talk to me. You know. <laughs> well, I guess I will just have to mentally prepare myself for whatever may happen. For season three, we'll just have to right. we'll just have to watch and see. Okay, okay. so the um, last question for you is, um, and you follow him on Twitter. There's a gentleman named Joseph Morgan. He plays Klaus in the Vampire Diaries. Um, he's a really huge fan of the show. Um, I can tell you, I met him once, and I was like, "Hey, did you see The Walking Dead this weekend?" And he screamed at me to shut up that he had not watched the episode yet. It was at home on his TiVo. And did, did not spoil it for him. And that kid filmed 14 hours that day and went home and watched the show and tweeted about it that night. Huge fan of the show. So, with all that deep breath, any chance you're going to give him a guest starring role in season three? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I just, uh, <laughs> what, uh, yeah, I'm open to that. I mean, you know, if uh, um, if we have the role and he's right and he's available, you know, uh, you're saying he's a full-time guy on Vampire Diaries, right? Or, he, is for, he is for now, but his character is one of those characters that you never know. You you never know. Yeah, it's uh, you know, we we just want to make sure that we have the right role. You know, I, I, I would love for, you know, we have a great cast and people who end up, you know, Michael Raymond James came over and had a, had a terrific episode. So, so someone of, of, um, uh, you know Joseph Statue. You want to bring him in and make sure that you give him a nice meaty role, so he has fun, and and we, you know we get the most out of him and stuff. You don't want to just bring him in and not give him something that's worthy of his talent. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm love to talk to him about it, and hopefully we can Sweet. find something that we can work together. Sure. I'm gonna have to link him to this interview and get y'all in touch because I think that he would probably geek. He just wouldn't. He really loves this show. He tweets about it every. Oh, that's, week. that's so like, sweet. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah awesome. of course. Yeah. Well, well. And both well, shows are filmed well. in Georgia, so it's convenient for you. <laughs> well, very cool. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Well, before I let you go, thank you so much uh, for coming on tonight. And if you would give us a little clip, um, you just say your name and you're listening to the VRO, and that would be it. <laughs> Okay, great. And we'll do it now? Yep, whenever you're right. ready. Okay, great. Hi, this is Glenn Mazzara, and you're listening to the VRO. All right, sweet. Um, Amy is going to take you into the sound room, and thank you again for joining us. I really, really appreciate it. Huge fan of the show over here. Well, thank you. That was fun. Thanks for having me, Amber. All right, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. I think I'm still on it. I am still on air. Okay, Amy is in the Amy's in the sound room, and I'm still on air. And I'm just gonna kind of hang out for a second until she joins me. Even Hello. though I think this might have been our last, our last. I'm so red right now. <laughs> you did an amazing job. Okay, I got it. I, 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 I can't said, lie. Amber should be just Morgan's agent. <laughs> Amber was freaking out. Because a couple of weeks, it was a couple of weeks ago. It was last week. We were on Twitter, and me and Amber was on the phone, and I start screaming and hollering. She thinks I'm having a heart attack or something, and she was like, "What?" I said, "The showrunner." And she was like, "The showrunner of what?" I was like, "He followed me," and she was like, "Of what?" And I'm screaming, "The Walking Dead," and so she was like, "Oh, oh, oh, that's so unfair." And then it was and then it was funny. I tweeted him and I said, "Hey, if I looked like this, would you consider giving me an interview?" And the picture that I tweeted him was a picture of me two or three years ago where I was a zombie for Halloween. And he was like, "Yes." The very next day, his people got a hold of Amy and said, "Hey, Glenn was tweeting with you and some of your hosts last night, and we just wanted to go ahead and set up that interview." And I I didn't know that he was really being serious when he said yes. Like I mean, I was just like, you know, he tweets everybody all the time. So I just thought, you know, oh, that's a cool picture. Sure, I'll tell her yes. You know, <laughs> I didn't know 
I didn't know until we got that email, and then we set it up, and it's really difficult. I mean, this guy's really awesome. He is constantly on Twitter answering questions all the time. So yeah. to come up with questions that he hadn't answered yet was hard. He even said before we went on air, I told him that, and he was like, I get asked the same questions all the time. And that's what started me. I got really nervous at first. You could tell I was stumbling a little bit, but that's because I was scared he had answered some of these questions, and I didn't want to, like, get on his nerves, you know? But what's fun about it is um, he's like, okay, you guys, you know how you have your favorite actors and stuff like that? Well, he is, like, one of I don't want to put, like, the God status out there. But he is very high on our pedestals. <laughs> I mean, come on, he brought us The Walking Dead. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, I believe me and Amber, we talked a little last night how you know, I mean, when we took calls and stuff, people were nervous. Um, me and Amber were earlier. I'm still nervous. My My palms are still sweating. Yeah, I'm definitely a little red right now. <laughs> But it was a great interview. He, he, he's extremely – and see, this is why I love talking to the writers. You'll hear me say I love talking to the writers, and that's because the writers and the producers and stuff develop these characters. And, yes, I'm very appreciative of the actors that bring these characters to life. Don't get me wrong. But nobody understands a character like a writer does. And so to hear a writer talk about the show – it's all, it's sexy. It really is. Like it's yeah. just like a show that you like really love. It's like whoa, whoa, yeah. <laughs> it was it was awesome. It was awesome. I'm like, yeah. Yep. <sighs> yeah. Okay, so um, that's it. We could die happy now. By the yes. way, big anniversary surprise. We're not going to do a fourth year. <laughs> Joking. Yeah, don't say that. <laughs> Joking. But if we were ending, this would be the perfect ending. It really would. <laughs> like, really, okay, the show's over. <laughs> we're, we're done. done. <laughs> we, just got some, uh, we just got some sneaks. So, I don't think we can um, top what it. was the question he said he wouldn't answer? Oh, the winter question. The winter question, which yeah. kind of tells me that there might that be. There's definitely going to be some winter. And I hope by me saying Georgia doesn't have winners, he knows that they're going to have to make it to where there's somewhere else. I don't want them. Well, to no, they here. don't have. They don't have to make it somewhere else. They can do anything. There's snow machines. I guess that's true. They have a studio. <laughs> I didn't mean like they. I want to pick. I want them to pick up and film somewhere else. Oh, uh, by the way, did I or did I just not land Joseph Mo- Morgan a third season role? <laughs> we, we need to tweet. Everybody needs to tweet Joseph. Everybody, please, yes. Everybody, please, because. I'm getting the thank you make for that. Sure, make, sure you get, make sure you at Amber Ennis, the VRO, and, um, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. And then he said all that stuff about um, Joseph being talented and stuff. I thought that was really sweet. And, I, you know, he's probably never watched an episode <laughs> Well, that's it, guys. I think we're done for the week. Um, make sure you watch The Vampire Diaries and Secret Circle tomorrow. Uh, not sure what we're doing as far as recapping this week. We will tweet you and let you know. So just uh, make sure you watch Twitter. Yeah. We have um, – we're actually – we're done for this week. Um, done for this week. Next week, yeah, we might have some shows. We're working – okay, we're working on um, producing a horror movie um, – night with um michael and jamie michael if you guys listen to our zombie round table he is a zombie on the walking dead and um jamie chris Lowe is the ian lookalike everybody knows who he he is and we're doing a um a horror show so we need you guys to twitter up some names a lot of people have been twittering like crazy today to us some names for the show but we still haven't found one that like pops out at us 
So definitely um, Twitter us that. It's at the VRO. And um, for our um, Vampire Diaries month of May, we have booked um, Bonnie's mom, and we need questions as soon as possible. So, um, Amber, I sent you and Jess an e email about that. But everybody, Twitter us if you um, got a question. Twitter us tonight so we can put this um, the script and all that together. And that's it. We're done. So thank you for joining us. And we will be back next week with some recap shows, hopefully some interviews. If you're in the um, Virginia Beach area this weekend, stop by and talk to me and Josh and a couple of our friends. We'll be at Blood on the Beach with um, the Lost Boys and some um, some other horror people. Good night. Yep. Sounds good. Good night. All right. Good night. Bye. Do you love movies, music, books, television? You do? Then come on over to the VRO on Blog Talk Radio. We have shows for all your obsessions. Vampires, we've got them. The latest blockbuster movies, they're right here. Bands and books, music and fiction, it's all at the VRO. What are you waiting for? Log on to the VRO today. www.thevro.com